Hi everybody! Welcome to Sunday Night Live Stream. Uh, as you can see in the studio today, uh, I have Alice and Kevin joining us. Uh, yay! So glad to see you guys. Um, I just wanted to, before we start, uh, you know, going over what's been happening and results and questions and all that stuff, I, I just wanted to take a moment to tell you guys how I met Alice and Kevin. Um, they came up one day on my YouTube feed. Uh, I don't know, Alice was making something. Like I watched a couple of videos. This was in, you know, I think you guys had maybe a, you know, a few hundred subscribers or a thousand subscribers. You were fairly new. I watched a couple of your videos and then one day Alice was making something and you pulled out a spice package that I recognized as only being available in Western Canada. So I was like, oh, they're Canadian. And they're not only are they Canadian, they, you know, looks like they're from around here. And then I saw you go to Ikea one time in one of the videos and I, I recognized the parking lot somehow. Like I thought, I've, I've been to that Ikea. I know they're from around here. And then it wasn't long before you guys contacted me and, uh, uh, we got together for coffee and uh, I, you know, it, it was just such, we, we spoke for two hours. Like we just, we just chatted about everything for two hours. And uh, it was after that, that uh, I decided to do coaching with Alice and Kevin because I had been thinking about it for a long time, but it's really hard to make that decision you know, to, sure. to have somebody coach you. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure that you guys have that too. Like it's, it's hard for people to make that decision. Um, so some of, some of the things that, um, that I was struggling with, uh, the biggest thing was the constant stalling. Like I'd go up a couple of pounds, down a couple of pounds, you know, up two, down three, up one, down to, you know, and it would just go back and forth like that. I was really, um, you know, trying all kinds of different things. Um, and, uh, and then we did the coaching and, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I just didn't know how to target in and zone in on, on what exactly it was I should be doing. Um, and after your extremely detailed and thorough onboarding, uh, I just started having results. So I, you guys want to tell them what happened? Tell them the yeah, results? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, thank you for having us on live stream. We always love meeting with you, even though we do meet every single week on our one-on-one yes, -on -one calls. We do. But uh, we love being able to interact with your viewers and subscribers. And yeah, we, we're really grateful for the opportunity to be on here. So um, yeah, like like you mentioned, we got to talking at a nearby mall that was kind yeah. of in between the two of us. And we talked for a long time about all things carnivore, keto, and uh, YouTube as well. YouTube, yep. Yeah, <laughs> which we uh, value your uh, your advice and yeah, experience yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, so yeah, you came to us with a lot of the similar problems that a lot of people that are on the carnivore diet on have, they, a lot of them see that they have some initial results and then, then do require mm -hmm. some kind of targeting and down the road to kind of accelerate or either get past a, get past a plateau. And um, I think that's kind of where you were when you met us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dancing around on that plateau for quite some time. Yeah, for sure. And we, we experienced that as well. Like when we switched over from, I initially switched over to keto, saw some good results, but then experienced a stall, then went on to carnivore and I gained a bunch of weight going on to carnivore and then had to kind of troubleshoot and figure it out what we both did. And then, um, now we're kind of pretty, pretty grateful to be able to help people kind of get past that. And we develop our, our own system on how to kind of target in on the macros or other sort of lifestyle changes that need to be done to get past a stuck that people are basically stuck on. So, yeah. um, yeah, we can just go with kind of what you started with, how you, maybe your initial problems and kind of where you are now. Yeah. So, so like I said, I was, I was going up and down in weight. There was a time when I was tracking very thoroughly. Um, and I was even taking my blood glucose every day and my ketones, um, you know, just trying to figure this out. I, I tried high fat for 90 days, like very high fat, um, over 80%. Um, I tried intuitive eating, 
Um, I don't do so well with intuitive eating. Um, I, I just, you know, I don't have, I, I, it's hard for me to be really in touch with my satiety. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of need to be a tracker in order to see results. Uh, you know, I don't know if everybody is that way or not. Um, but I, I also was feeling like, you know, I kind of intuitively knew maybe I had the protein wrong. Mm. And, and I think that that is really what I learned from you guys. Um, and the other thing that I did was I didn't do a, a lot of planning. So I would take things out of the freezer and just eat and, and not really know exactly where I was landing when I stopped tracking. And, uh, yeah, I, I, there was, there's so, there was so many things about your coaching that just, uh, just, just brought me right, right into doing what I needed to do every day. And, um, you know, I, one of the things I really liked was that you, we did a pantry freezer and fridge inventory because yeah. I had no idea what I had. Like, like I just, you know, there, I mean, there's always food. There's always lots of food, um, yeah. go grocery shopping, stuff the freezer full, but I didn't really know what I had. And, and then you guys did, uh, you know, you, you took that all in and, um, you know, you planned some meals that included what I already had. I mean, I didn't even really have to go shopping for the first month because there was so much that I already had. Um, and so you work that in. Um, the other thing that I really loved is that some somewhere along, I don't even remember, to, I mean, we talked about my knee, we talked about uh, different things like that, um, how important it was for me to get some healing on my knee. And then Next thing I know, my daily meals were including, you know, sardines and salmon and cod livers. Like, so you guys like paid attention to my needs and knew that that was important to me to get those omega threes in. So, um, yeah, yeah like we I, like to do a really tailored sort of yeah for our one-on-one coaching clients. We definitely like to do a tailored solution, and that starts with looking at what's in your freezer or your pantry already, because most people have what they need in their fridge, especially if you've been on a carnivore diet for a while, like you have, and it's just right. about kind of reallocating the foods you're eating per day and maybe changing up the portion sizes or changing how you combine meats together to get to maybe macros that we're targeting for you. Right. And, um, we based a lot of the macros that on for you based on kind of our experience with what's worked with other people in the past, as well as us. And, uh, protein was definitely a priority and uh, determining kind of how much protein and how much fat you needed on a daily basis and yeah. then kind of working backwards. So, and yeah, especially with, with your situation, with your knee, there is a lot of specific things that obviously you've been limited with the amount of exercise you're able to do, but yeah. I think you've seen really good results, even though you haven't been doing too much strenuous exercise until recently, now that you're doing your squat challenge. Yes. So yes. that's really good. But even before that, you were seeing some pretty good results. So we're really happy that, um, that it worked well for you, especially in the first few weeks there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, I've got some, I'm going to let you guys, uh, maybe cause you have my measurement tracker in front of you. I'll, I'll let you guys do that one. But I also have a list of things that have nothing to do with measurements and, and weight. Of sure. Yeah, we can go that. yeah. So, um, one of the first things within a couple of weeks, I noticed that there was less hair in the shower. So before, um, when I, you know, washed my hair in the shower, uh, what I did, what I would do is, is I would sort of comb my, my fingers through my hair, collect the hair and stick it to the side of the shower. So it wouldn't go down the drain, um, and clog up the drain. Uh, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Like I don't have to do that anymore. It's like, I might have one or two that come out, which is normal. I mean, it's normal to have a few that mm. come out when you wash your hair, but but I, I had enough that I was worried I was going to, uh, you know, clog the drain. My nails. Now I've been in the garden today, so they might be dirty. I should have checked <laughs> first, but, but they are rock solid now. Like I was, they were constantly like, you know, broken and, and now I have to clip them <laughs> because they're so, they're so hard. They're hard as rock. Um, the recomposition, uh, you, you guys will say, you know, my measurements and all that. Um, but it was always really difficult 
to, it was always really difficult for me to lose weight or lose inches from my hips and my thighs. So I was really surprised to see that I was getting results there. Um, and I bought, uh, I ended up having to go and buy three new pairs of pants that were a smaller size. <laughs> But those pants are, they're not tight. They're actually loose. Like I have, I have room. So I'm kind of like a half size in, so I feel like I've lost one and a half sizes. And, and, and I know we're not done yet. We still have three weeks or something like that. I kind of feel like I, I could make it to the next size by, by the time we're done, the next size down. So, so that, that would be like two sizes. My sleep scores are up. I do I wear my Fitbit, I wear it to bed, uh, and I do, you know, look at my sleep score uh, because that's always been a thing. Um, through the stress of moving and, and various other things that were going on, I was, you know, not getting great scores like 60s and 70s. And now almost every day I'm in the 80s. One of these days I like to be in the 90s. But you know what? That That will hopefully come. Um, I'll take the 80s and the fact that so you touched on this the fact that after I had quite a severe injury I, I took a really nasty fall at the end of July a week before moving day which was not fun and you know the doctor uh, said that it would hurt for a long time because of how I fell where I fell and the previous I fell right on the previous injury um, and the fact that you know, within a very short time, I was able to, I'm able to go for normal walks. Um, many days I, I hit between eight and 10,000 steps a day. I'm doing that hundred squat challenge uh, every day. Um, like to me, that just seems it's gotta be, the, it's gotta be the protein. It's, it's building. <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel so strong. I, I, you know, and I don't take naps. I'm on no medications. Um, like I'm just raring to go. So, yeah. 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 I think you've had awesome results and part of it is, yeah, I think the protein's definitely helped with your, obviously the strength of your hair, your nails. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's helped with some of your recovery with your knee as well. And, uh, I think it'll continue to help as you kind of build out the more of your exercise plan as well. Yeah. So, um, and part of the stuff that we kind of go over on a weekly basis with our with our clients as well as you is kind of troubleshooting those things like energy and um, sleep. So hopefully that has improved in your yes. situation as well. I think it has. Yeah, it definitely has. Yeah, both sleep and stress do directly impact uh, weight loss results as well. So yeah, we definitely look to optimize uh, sleep and stress. Yeah, they sure possible. do. Yeah. Yeah, but in terms of your your starting your starting measurements. Uh, we can go over that if that's okay. Okay. Yep. That is fine. Uh, so back at the beginning, of it, so we'll call this week zero. We're now on week eight now, but on week mm -hmm. zero, you were at 189 pounds. Mm -hmm. And as of this morning, you're at 180 pounds. So you've yep. lost nine pounds, yep. Yep. which is a great job. And, I was uh, really hoping for 10 by today, but <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I'll take no, the I think, I think it's really good, especially because you are an experienced carnivore. Um, mm -hmm. experience in keto, keto yep. as well for, for many years. And, um, it's not like you're having problems with accountability or cheating or any sort of like issues right. on that side. Right. Yeah. So it's more kind of just dialing in the foods, yeah. finding yes. out macros and maybe cuts of meat that work better for you. Um, because even though carnivore, a lot of people do see success with intuitive eating. Um, a lot of it's kind of retraining intuition for, yeah. especially if a goal is weight loss. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for healing purposes, maybe you can be more intuitive. Um, but if you're on a targeted weight loss plan or you want to accelerate those weight loss or get to a certain body composition goal where you're either increasing muscle or losing body fat, there are yeah. just like any diet, um, you can definitely tweak and manip manipulate things to work better in your favor. Um, so I think we made a lot of those tweaks on your side. Yeah, yes. I think the goal of our coaching program in general is to help people retrain that intuition. We use macros as a tool so that eventually, um, hopefully throughout the duration of the program, retrain the intuition so they understand how to eat um, yes. for weight loss, even down the line. And yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of the clients that come to us are experienced carnivores that are stuck in a stall, um, yeah. mm -hmm. just looking for very specific macro uh, adjustments to kind of move forward. 
Yes. And that's been fantastic for me because even, even now, I mean, so you're every week you give me my food plan for the week and there's yep. some days when I just follow it verbatim and I don't have to think, but there's other days when I've got all these leftovers or something, you know, my son was just here for three days, you know, things like that happen. And so I have to then improvise, but because I have those targeted macros and I already have, I already know from the foods that are in my fridge that you're giving me on my, <laughs> yeah. on, on my meal plan, I know exactly what to do to make it happen, you know, for a day that's a little more unpredictable. So yeah, yeah would you say you maybe that. your, would you say maybe your intuition is kind of develop it's, more now because i've noticed it, when you even looking yeah. over your eating results and because i do see every bite of food that you put in your mouth i know <laughs> <laughs> um i do notice that you're hitting the macros and not even following the plan on all days now and you're kind of yeah. doing it more intuitively yeah. now so it, and, it's um, been one of those weeks for sure um yeah. and i and i feel like i'm still doing pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah for sure no that's great yeah and in terms of inches you touched on this you've lost maybe one and a half sizes on your yeah. pants so yeah. you've lost uh, about 12 inches overall on your body. Yeah, yeah. Um, the biggest being your waist and your hips. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. That is just like uh, I I've never had that happen before. Usually, yeah. usually I lose it on my bust. You know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's well, that's where it's quite common for for women to store to store body fat. For guys, it's more yeah. in the belly area. For women, it's yeah. more hips and waist. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, that's really awesome. And um, you've lost a little bit on your on your thighs and your calves as well, and a little bit yeah. on your arms. Or yeah. actually, your arms are about the same, but your no, calves I think and my thighs. Ar- yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think as have you as you kind of continue back into your your exercise routine and you start building up, you'll start seeing kind of more overall um, inches being kind of melted away, and uh, we'll keep progressing from there. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So yeah, we're really pleased with your results so far. Yeah, uh, I am too. Next four I, weeks. I am I am so pleased with my results. I'm just I'm just tickled. Um I, I see the uh the I think we should answer some questions. Sure. Because if, if that's okay, or um because I, I think they're starting to build up here. Yeah, definitely. So okay. So I'm gonna put this up from Danny. Should you target your grams of protein based on your current weight, goal weight, or ideal body weight? a good question yeah for sure um i think a good i think i recognize danny actually from our from our channel as well hey danny Mm -hmm. um so we like to start as a starting point for daily grams of protein as lean body mass so that might you might be able to eat more than that but that's a good starting point if you're trying to develop a meal plan is how much how many pounds of lean body mass you have one gram of protein and then you can either go up or down from there and a lot of people, um, when they come to us, they're typically under eating um, protein and getting up to that point could be a challenge at first. So maybe it's about finding cuts of meat that your ability to get down that amount of protein because a lot of, especially women, are, aren't used to eating that much protein. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I like to start. Do you, do you bring age into it at all? Like, is that a factor? Um, with our one-on-one, yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, if it's, okay. cause typically as you get older, um, you require more protein. Yeah. You think it would be the other way around, but you actually require more as you get older because there is more, um, muscle wastage as you get older. So you need more to kind of support it as well as, um, incorporating like some sort of strength routine into your plan is very important as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so our next question is from Bonnie. How do you calculate your fat macros when doing higher protein? Um, so for that one, I would say like you can have, you can be high fat and high protein at the same time. You don't have to be one or the other. Um, so I think the key to like a successful carnivore diet is having enough fat and enough protein. So you would want to assess things like your energy levels, your sleep, yeah. Um, it's more about when knowing when to adjust yeah. the fat to protein ratio. Um, mm-hmm. that's, that's the most <clears> important, like what factors that come in, like energy for sure. Yeah. If your weight loss is stalled, um, satiety as well. That makes a big difference. And yeah. fat to protein can also impact things like sleep, um, as well. Yeah. And digestion. That's a big one too. Yes. Yes, it is. 
some people don't have gallbladders. I mean, yeah. there's various yeah. Yeah. things that happen there. So everyone's very individualistic. So people will start yeah. kind of all over the map. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Kat says, I can't wait to start the Carnivore Cut Academy. So that's something that's coming at the end of the month. So stay yep. tuned to Alice and Kevin's channel. Um, let's see here. Donna would like to figure out where to buy oxtail. Seems tough to find in Alberta, but I'm on the island until Tuesday heading home via Vancouver. Where do you buy it? I bought it at the butcher store. I bought it at Costco. Um, what yeah, we buy it at Costco too. We buy yeah, it at Costco, Costco too. A lot of Korean yeah. butchers were also have oxtail as well. Because yes, uh, Asian stores. I've seen butcher, it a lot yeah. in Asian yeah. stores for sure. So, yeah. so look around, Donna. Um, I love Alice and Kevin. This is oh, hey, Kathy. Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. They have helped me so much. Yes, yes. Yeah. Kathy's Hi, one of her Kathy. clients. She's one. She's she's seen really good results. Yes, too. yes. <laughs> well, and and she actually uh, messaged me one time about you guys and suggested that you know you guys to me. So it was really good to to see that. So Pula says the times she loses weight and keeps it off, she's tracking. Okay, that is well. Yeah, I I believe yeah. that. Um, uh, Angie Kuhn, I missed it. Can you say how much you have lost since coaching? So, since, so I've been coaching, uh, on, on their coaching program for eight weeks and I've lost nine pounds and 12 inches, which I'm very thrilled about. Um, okay. Someone else is having, so Rebecca, I do the hair thing too. Seeing, seeing a widening part line, some thin spots. So maybe some more protein, you know, might help that. Um, okay, please. This is from Lady 3333. Please break down fat protein ratio at elementary level. <sighs> Show the math. So confused. It's going to be different for everybody. That's the problem. Yeah, for um, sure. I can explain how to calculate it. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so... Um, one gram, it's basically the amount of calories from fat coming to compared to the amount of calories from protein. So one gram of protein is four calories and one gram of fat is nine calories. So it's the percentage of calories that's coming from fat compared to the percentage of calories that are coming from protein. So, um, a 70, 30 fat to protein ratio would be, um, 70% of calories coming from fat, 30% of the calories coming from protein. Um, and then because fat is a little bit over twice as calorie dense as protein. Um, one gram of fat is a lot, which provides a lot more of those calories, obviously. So mm -hmm. um, I think one to one is about 70, 30. Yeah, so I was just going to say, yeah, that's the general that, ballpark. If you're doing 100 grams of protein, 100 grams of fat, that's about 70, 30. Yeah. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close. pretty close. Yeah. And many people start with that one to one ratio yeah. and yeah. they can do quite well with it, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, these, this tweaking is really going to depend on an in, your individual circumstances and goals. Mm -hmm. So, yep. um, yeah, it, uh, okay. Let's, uh, thank you for explaining that, you know, the, and the other thing, so I had somebody, uh, tell me they didn't, the reason they went carnivore is because they didn't want to track. And then I heard you say on one of your videos that a pound of meat contains approximately a hundred grams of protein yeah. Yeah. and, and like i felt like well, that was a liberating thought because <laughs> i had yeah. never thought of that before so for those of you non-trackers out there if you do not want to track just keep that in mind if you you know a, a pound of meat is about 100 grams of protein so you can just change that up as you like one correction for that it's lean yes meat. lean, lean meat, meat. okay yeah. so okay the fattier yes. the meat is it'll it'll be less protein than that um, okay but okay. on average, it's around 80 to 100 if you're. Yes. Want to but it gives them a rough idea of where to yeah. start. Yeah, right? for sure. Especially if you're just starting fresh in this diet. At least it gives you kind of, yeah, an idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Julia uh, wants to know what helped with the hair and nails. Well, I feel it was the extra protein. Um, and I guess collagen too, because, you know, I mean, I eat fairly fatty meats and uh, so protein the the fatty meats that have all the collagen in it that is going to help hair and nails i mean that's for sure 
oxtails, yeah. ribs, yeah. yes, um, yes. beef back ribs. I think that's the channel. I think that's the video you saw us watch your first time was the oxtail video. That's what I, it was one of the early ones. And yeah. I even made those oxtails. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were so, it was like an oven braised version where I had yeah. been always putting them in the instant pot before. Yeah. And I sure liked that oven version. That was so good. Yeah. That's uh, definitely a cut we like to include quite often as long, yes. along with the back ribs as well. That's one yeah. of our favorites. And then save those bones because those uh, oxtail bones also make the best bone broth for sure afterwards. Yeah. So um pula in what amount of time was the now nine pounds of weight loss that was in eight eight weeks and i've got four weeks to go so uh yeah hopefully that will well you know we'll see okay uh cheryl congrats on the weight loss thank you okay here's a good question from uh regina hi regina nice to see you here does Co your coaching include intermittent fasting. Have you coached anyone that suffers from decades of gastroparesis? I don't know if I said that right. Gast uh, well, yeah, we definitely coach people on intermittent fasting. Um, that's part of it. Um, everyone is different in terms of um, how much fasting they can do, especially someone who's more experienced in carnivore, maybe more fat adapted, can yeah. go a little bit longer. Yeah. If you're Kind of new to this diet i probably wouldn't recommend fasting at the very beginning because it is quite a shock to the body to just jump into fasting um but if you are experienced yeah fasting i think is a great thing to do i fast quite a bit um it also for... de depends on your own psychology too so we also help clients that's the value with one-on-one -on -one coaching we kind of build people up to be able to fast um if they're not super experienced and so mm -hmm. i think a lot of clients find valuable that they can text us while they're like going through a fast letting us know they're at mm -hmm. whatever hour of their fast. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, it's the encouragement and the accountability aspect that one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one coaching provides as well. I haven't heard of gastroparesis before. So I don't, we've had yeah. clients that had obviously digest, issues, digestive issues, issues yeah. because, guess. yeah, because it's quite common for people to go on carnivore with, when they have gut issues. Um, and then switching to a high fat diet comes with a lot of, Got issue problems as well, so yeah. kind of take kind of troubleshooting those and maybe adjusting their meal plan so it um, works out better for them as yeah. part of the process as well that we like to do. And um, we typically end up finding a solution for all of our clients on finding a either amount of fat or amount of protein that works better for their digestion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Regina, for that question. Um, Patty says, well done. Your smile says it all. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Um, okay. Uh, Pula, do you have a protein-fat ratio with this plan? Well, I guess you would with, uh, you know, when you're coaching with every person, yep. you'd probably give them something specific. Yeah, yeah. So we start off with something, and then we adjust it as we go throughout the program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we tailor it as the kind of based on the results. And, um, so it's different for everyone. So yeah. we can't really give blanket, blanket statements, blanket yeah. statements yeah. because it is dependent on someone's situation. We kind of do a bunch of onboarding and questionnaires and kind of figure out your situation before even getting into meal plans. And then, um, eventually we do kind of work backwards and figure out which fat to protein ratio will work better for you. Yeah. And, and if I can just say that the onboarding process is very detailed, there's lots of questions, there's conversation, you yeah. know, so they knew that, I mean, I'm, I'm 65, I'm going to have different needs than someone who's 35. Um, you know, I've got the knee injury. I, I've, uh, you know, like there's, there's different factors that need to be taken into consideration. So, um, thank you guys. Uh, Danny has a, enrolled in your academy. Yeah. So yeah, there was some pre-enrollment yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's ready to roll out at the end of the month. And will you guys be opening it for more enrollment at that time? Yeah. So um, I think we sent a link um, to sign up for the wait list. Um, so the first okay. initial group was just for a pre-order and then um, yeah. down the road we will open okay. it up. But awesome. right now, if you want to join the wait list, then you'll be first notified when it's... Uh, yeah when it's uh, available. Well, I pre-enrolled, so I don't need the wait. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's see here. 
Uh, Win Mini says, how can you push for fat loss? I think I've gained muscle, but the fat doesn't seem to be leaving. <laughs> how can you push for fat loss? Um, but the measurements would, are usually a telltale yeah. of a, whether of the changes in body composition. Typically when people go on carnivore, they do see um, a little bit of like muscle gain in addition to the, in, in addition to the fat loss. So we use measurements as the way to gauge um, how much um, muscle you may have gained or how much fat you may have lost. Yeah. 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 Uh, Naruto says that Sam's club also sells oxtails. Oxtails. Thank you. Uh, Joanne has subscribed to Alice and Kevin. Oh, thanks Joanne. Thanks Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Yes. Uh, please go and subscribe to them. I believe their YouTube channel has been shown a few times. Um, so Erica, Anita, do you get so full that you find it difficult to eat enough protein? So I would say that the first couple of weeks, that was the case. And I don't think those first couple of weeks I hit the target I was given. I, I fell short usually a little bit. Um, I just couldn't get you know, those, those few mouthfuls, the, the dogs benefited greatly. <laughs> like here, please finish the rest. Um, but now I can hit those goals and it, uh, I can hit them easily actually. And I, you know, I guess I just got, I got used to eating the protein. Now I'm doing it in two meals a day. And there was a few times those first two, three weeks where if there was quite a bit left at the end of my meal, I would wait an hour and come back and finish the rest of, of my protein. And that, so that kind of almost made it, you know, three meals or two and a half meals, but it, it was okay. Like I have a fairly short, well, for me, a short eating window. And as long, I felt as long as I was eating it within the eating window that I, I felt okay with that and uh, got it all in, you know, as best I could. So yeah, and that's the same similar strategy that I use. If I do OMAD, I always try to make sure that I'm getting all my food in and I'll call it OMAD, but it's really like an hour and a half of eating, right, um, right. but I'm still able to get all my macros in, in that, that period of time. So, yeah. um, it more, it's more about kind of not eating in the, in your fasting window. Cause you're, you're fasting about like 18, 19 hours a day, right? Now? Yes. Yes. So, I uh, usually eat around 10 and then I try to eat at four. Yeah. Today we'll won't be eating at four because here we are. <laughs> but, but yeah, most most of the time it's it's that kind of a window between ten and four. Yeah. So okay. Um Carnivore Leo. Hello, Rhonda. How are you? Hey Rhonda. Uh, hey Rhonda. Nice to see you here. Okay. Uh so Betty wants Bensi. Hendrickson, what is the squat challenge? Well, uh, I saw uh, Christy from Meeting Wellness. She uh, started on October 1st. I saw her video come up on October 1st where she was starting a squat and push up challenge. And at first I looked at it and I was like, oh boy, um, yeah, that's tough. But then I decided to do it and uh, I've been doing it every day. Uh, so it's hundred, squ hundred squats a day, but not, not all at once. Please don't try to do a hundred squats in one go. I, I mean, unless you're, you know, ultra fit. Um, I, I break it up throughout the day and I do modified squats. And if you, um, take a look at last week's Tuesday talk, I showed my viewers, <laughs> some of them may be dismayed that I showed them that, but you know, some of them wanted to know. So I showed my viewers how I do the modified squats and the wall push-ups, because you got to start somewhere. You have okay. to start somewhere and it, it doesn't matter. And if you, if you can't get up from a chair without using your hands, like if you can't just stand up straight from a chair without using your hands, you know, consider uh, modified squats using a chair because that is going to help you. Um, and then your kids won't have to pull you up out of a chair, um, you know, as you get older, which is what I was worried about. So thanks for that question. Um, do you have to give up dairy? I, it really depends question. on the person. Um, maybe if you're in a stall or you have a situation where you're 
you maybe feel like you eat too much of it or you rely on it mm -hmm. and you're eating it every single day. Maybe it's something you want to try. Um, it depends on the person. Like right now I include dairy, but not that much of it. But there's been times where I included way too much dairy and, <clears throat> excuse me, there's, there's been times where I've included way too much dairy and it definitely stalled or I gained weight. Yeah. That's probably when I first switched to carnivore, I was eating way more cheese. I think we were both eating yeah. way more cheese than we probably should have because we thought, yeah. oh, it's carnivore. We can just eat as much cheese as we want. But um, I don't think it's, it's a meat diet. It's not a dairy diet, I think. Yeah. yeah. We right. definitely have techniques also that we pass off in one-on-one -on -one coaching of alternatives, helping people kind of wean off of the dairy um, if they've been doing a lot of dairy for a long time. But for some people, they can incorporate it here and there. Um, as long as it's done strategically, if you're like, you know, just still still doing the basic principles of hitting the protein numbers, making sure you're getting, getting the fat to protein ratio right, um, then those are kind of the two, yeah. I think, biggest levers of success that we've seen. Um, so it's not that you have to give it up entirely, um, but we do. Um, as long we, as we it fits your plan. Yeah, yeah, as long as it fits the plan, yeah. So what's, um, this is kind of funny because I think I was about three or four weeks in, um, you know, you guys, when we have our weekly consult, you send me your food plan. And at one yeah. point I went, you know, they never put dairy on my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just occurred to me that, <clears throat> well, that was probably by design and I'm yeah. sure doing better without dairy than with. Yeah. And in fact, in this entire eight weeks, I've only had dairy once. And that was on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, you probably, I don't know if you've looked at my food for this week or not yet. Uh -huh. Uh, so okay, so I haven't uh, seen I haven't seen it this week actually. No, not yet. I'll yeah, but, okay. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'll just come clean right now. So on yeah. thanks on Thanksgiving Day, for dessert I had uh, unsweetened whipped cream in a in a little bowl. I I had whipped up some cream for the rest of the family to have yeah. on their pie, and I just and it, I never sweeten the cream. And it's um it's the Avalon uh, dairy cre cream. The only ingredient is cream. There's no fillers. Yeah. There's nothing. And so I whipped that up, put some in a little bowl for myself. It's probably about half a cup or something whipped. Yeah. And that was my dessert. And it was a perfectly good substitute for pie. Um, you know, yeah, we had Canadian Thanksgiving. So I think that's a good strategy to use it more as a yeah. treat or as yes. a dessert. Because yes. it is, it, even though it's carnivore friendly, it is still a processed. Well, dairy, cheese alone. Cheese is definitely processed. Yeah. Um, no matter what you do, it's because it's not directly from an animal. Well, it is directly from an animal, but you have to go through some processes yeah. in order to make a cheese, right? Yeah. So um, some people can get away with it much better than others. Um, just like some people can get away with carbs better than others. It's the yeah. same sort yeah. of yeah. Um, analogy. So you have to kind of assess for yourself whether it is good for you. Um, yeah. For your, I think for you, Anita, um, I think we've seen good results um, by yes. minimizing it. Yes. Um, and because you've been doing carnivore for a while, we kind of were able to identify that that was maybe something that you needed to change. Well, it was, it's something that I have to face every now and then, you know, yeah. but I, you know, but you guys also made a point about, you know, butter is kind of like it comes from an animal, but there is dairy in it. And so yeah. it's not that you say don't have butter and every once in a while I have butter and even yeah. on your plan, you've put it in the plan sometimes, yep. but I certainly don't have as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably to my benefit as well. So it's, yep. it seems, it seems to be working well. Yeah. And just understanding that like cardboard sorry. going car. Sorry. I just have to close the door. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, so sometimes when somebody walks down the street, the dogs just start to go crazy. Oh, so oh, our dog does the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What were you saying? Alice. Oh, I was just saying going carnivore is very much a journey for a lot of people learning how to eliminate foods. And, yeah. um, you know, for someone who's experienced, it might be very easy to kind of cut off the dairy right away. Uh, but for some people, it takes they kind of use it to help them in the process. Um, so that's kind of where the, we have recipes on our channel. And we do have clients that are like, Oh, I saw a recipe on your blog, like, I'd like to learn how to incorporate that into my meal plan. And so that's something that we would, like pass off as well, like knowledge. Mm -hmm around like how to incorporate recipes and, and dairy into the plan um, strategically to and make sure you're kind of balancing everything out and you're still eating towards your goals. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see, okay, so, uh, you know, I'm sure that this question comes up uh, now and again, I mean, and you guys have different levels and things like that. Um, yes. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. So uh, we do have a process where you had to book a consultation call with us so we can understand what uh, your needs are. So coaching fees do depend on like, basically length and support, uh, but we do have payment plans available for people um, as well. So there's a lot of options yeah. and uh, we try to be as flexible as possible. Uh, so I think, I, plans. Yeah. Yeah. I think Anita, you left a link underneath the video if you want to book a consultation yes. call with us. Yes. And uh, we are offering a discount to basically all the viewers of the live stream. So $100 off the coaching program. And uh, we can oh, discuss pricing. I forgot about that. That is yeah. excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you so just much. Just we'll, thank, yeah. thank Anita and to thank her viewers and everything. So we will offer $100 off the coaching program. And um, if you want to, all you have to do is book in the next day or so here, 24 hours um, okay. after this live stream is posted. And yep. then, so um, all those links are definitely, uh, I know that the moderators, um, which I don't know if I said to you guys, Bonnie and uh, Melissa are the moderators today. They're the ones sharing all the wonderful links and making sure that you guys are getting the information that you want. So they'll yep. make sure those links are, are going. Yeah. Um, sure. Okay. Yeah, so, so basically just a link to book a, a free consultation call with us. We'll kind of go over kind of your situation and then we can talk to you about um, pricing if it's a good fit for if one of my coaching. Fit. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of the main point. We have to make sure that it's a good fit, that we yeah. can actually help you <laughs> first. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. And because because it is one-on-one -on -one coaching, we do have somewhat limited capacity yeah. of how many clients that we take on just to make sure that, um, you know, we're, um, yeah. it's a very high level of support because you do get direct text messaging access to us um, yeah. throughout the duration of the program. Yeah. So we have a few spots open for this next round. So if people are interested, yeah, book a call. We'd love to talk to you. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do you, this is from Danny. Do you recommend your clients have an eating window that starts in the morning, like breakfast and lunch, or later, like lunch and dinner? Um, I would go with someone, something that you can actually maintain. Yeah. So as long as you can yeah. do it on a regular basis, whatever whatever works better for you. It's more about your lifestyle, like your work, the time of your work and yeah. stuff, and what works best for you. Yeah. There are situations where. Um, like I've researched that obviously like circadian rhythm plays a part in it and it's, I've heard it's better to eat more in the morning and, um, have your biggest, not, not eat too much before, right before bed. Yeah. So you don't want to be eating too close before bed. Maybe give it three or four hours to, to digest. But the um, actual schedule really varies depending on the person too. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to eat the same window every single day too. Like there's definitely, yeah. um, you know for people who are easing into fasting, they could start with three times a week and, and kind of build up from there. So it also depends on your experience as well. Mm -hmm. um, but there, we don't really have like a blanket statement in terms of like times of day yeah. uh, for people to eat. Yeah. Cause we all have different schedules. So I, yeah. I mean, it has to work for your life too. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. Um, any tips on how to curb the between meal snacks? I'm having trouble with that now that the weather is turning cooler. I would say increase your fat and eat more between eat more at the actual meals would be the two main ones. So just to give these people an idea, you guys, um, you know, I eat approximately or I try to eat approximately 150 grams of protein a day divided between two meals. When I have that in the morning and, and sometimes I do eat a bigger meal in the morning, I find that I'm, I'm hungry in the morning, that I don't have the same hunger in the afternoon or the early evening, but I'm usually quite hungry by the time I eat in the morning. I am so full from eating that food and, you know, trying to make sure I get that in that, I mean, there's, I have not even had a thought to snack except for that, those couple of times I eat chicken instead of beef, but that's another story. Um, I, I feel like, no, there's, it's just not happening. I, I, there's no room for, <laughs> for a snack. So, yeah. And that's one of the that, ways we design. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that that's the benefit of eating the right amount of protein and fat in your yeah. meal. And that's the benefit of carnivore. Really. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we design the meal plans to make sure people are eating enough at each meal. Um, and yeah. we adjust weekly so that we'll go over on our weekly calls, whether you have been snacking, cause we don't want snacking we want to right. have set meal times as much as possible because obviously there's a associated blood sugar spike and insulin response whenever someone eats yep. and we want to minimize those spikes as much as possible um 
and then we either get into two or three or one meal is the best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's, it's food freedom for me, you know, not snacking. Cause I used to be a snacker. I know what it's like. Oh, for sure. Us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So next question, boy, we, these questions are just coming and coming. Um, so the next question is uh, hundred grams. That 100 grams to one pound, is that for the whole day of protein eating? Not for me, it wasn't. I guess it could be for somebody else, but because um, I eat about 150 grams a day, and that's a pound and a half roughly. And as Kevin pointed out, that's, you know, when you're talking about lean protein. Yeah. Um, so you probably need more than that. Say. Yeah. Yeah. You would probably Definitely. need more than that to get 100 grams if you're eating something like a ribeye, um, which is much fattier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or anything like, unless you're eating like 95% lean ground beef, um, that would be close to that. But if you're eating like 80, 20 or 70, 30, you'll need more than that to get hundred grams of protein. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so many, um, things to that it depends on. So here's, here's a good question. And I know that there are people in this boat due to a previous weight loss surgery. I cannot eat a lot of food at one time. How do I manage that? It's a great yeah. question. So we had a client that had a surgery with uh, the stomach band um, in the past. And the main thing that we did was just split it up into smaller meals. And obviously it's best to kind of have set three set meals, but not everyone can do that because of mm -hmm. things like weight loss surgeries. So you'll still see a lot of benefits by sticking to carnivore unprocessed foods um, and being able to get the food down is more important than forcing a fast every single day. I think being able to eat enough and nourish your body is more important than, yeah, than just making sure you're trying to get a fast in every day. Yeah. And, and, um, I have met many carnivores who have had weight loss surgery. Yeah. And, um, one thing I've learned, uh, is that if uh, sometimes with a weight loss surgery, you don't uh, absorb as many nutrients from the food. So it's really important to to try to get that food in, um, even if you do have to eat more often. Okay. Uh, uh, pursuit of bliss. No one was dismayed with your squats, Anita. People need to see people that look like them doing things. It's very, thank you. Thanks for the support. Um, okay, Regina has come back to us with an explanation of gastro per I don't know how to say it. I'm so sorry, oh. Regina. But there it is. It slows down the digestive process anywhere from one hour to three to four days. Very hard to determine oh. which mm -hmm. meal is causing which reaction during that time. Okay. That's interesting. That's something new to me. Yeah. Um, you could always just go more, do a more strict version of elimination. So you're maybe eating mm -hmm. mono meals. So then you can decide, figure out it's all yeah. about investigation. Really. Um, you can just do, maybe it's just steaks, just one cut until you figure out what's, what's causing your issue. Yeah. But, uh, um, you'd have to maybe talk to your doctor about that. Exactly. About Kevin's done a lot of that, yeah. uh, experimentation, the yeah. elimination yeah. experimentation. Yeah. Cause I've dealt with a lot of isolation. I've dealt with a lot of auto. Yeah. Well, I've dealt with autoimmune condition my whole life. And that's one of the main reasons I switched over to carnivore. Yeah. And part of it was kind of experimenting what agreed with me and what doesn't like shellfish doesn't really agree with me very well. Yeah. So I kind of don't eat any of it, but um, I'm okay with most other meats. They haven't caused any sort of autoimmune flare ups. So, um, yeah, just like any sort of carnivore is the ultimate elimination diet, maybe it's going on to lion or something even more extreme. And then adding th things in back to, over time and seeing whether or how those foods impact you. Uh, yeah. Also the fat protein would also be something that you may want to look into yeah. uh, adjusting up and down and seeing um, whether that mm -hmm. helps at all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Regina, for coming back and clarifying that. Christine uh, says if one pound of meat, is a hundred grams. I probably shouldn't have said that it's, it's not entirely <laughs> true because it depends yeah. on, you know, the yeah. fat content. I would be eating too much protein as my lean body mass is 98. Uh, what am I missing? Yeah. So that's a starting point, really lean body mass. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that have come to us are eating less than that. Um, I, I personally think 
people should be eating at least around 100 grams a day, um, unless you're very, very, very short um, or very small person. Um, so you probably could eat more than that. And especially if you're doing any form of exercise, you'll probably eat yeah. more than that as well. Um, yeah. I can go over my, my macros. I'll probably eat between 180 to 200 grams of protein in a day. And, but I am now going into more like more intensive weightlifting as before I wasn't. So, um, it's really person dependent, but that's really just a starting point to see if you can even hit that first. Cause a lot of clients have come to us eating maybe like 40, 50 grams of protein in a day. And that's, that's the bare minimum RDA that's recommended by the FDA. So, um, just to survive. So you probably, most people probably need more than that to be healthy. Um, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and I'm doing great on, <laughs> on more. So yeah. I think, I think that's good. Um, so meeting wellness, I'm having a great time with the squat challenge. You did 110 today. Well, uh, everybody, yeah. this, this is Christy from meeting wellness. She's the one to blame for the squat challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it is her fault. I'm doing them, but thank you. Thank you, Christy. Uh, I got to do 110 tomorrow now. Okay. Um, so I hear this question from people or this comment a lot. And, and so, yeah, I think this is an interesting question. Isn't that too much protein for one meal? I heard your body can only absorb about 30 grams per meal. What say um, Allison, Kevin? <clears throat> I've read that's been debunked. Um, okay. I think that's more, from my understanding, that was more a supplement industry sort of push. Um, for the protein powder industry um, to get people to buy protein shakes and have them every three to four hours to push that sort of um, message. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's debunked, but I encourage people to do their own research, but I haven't found any issues eating more than 30 grams of protein in a day or in per meal. Um, and I regularly eat more than that. I think a lot of carnivore people eat more than that because mm -hmm. it's the majority of your diet is protein yeah. and, along with the associated fat. So Okay. Yeah. So, um, referring to the fats, thank you, Linda, for your question, referring to the fats and fat grams and ratios, where do all these fats come from? Is it only from the meat that you eat or do you add some sort of additional fat like butter or oil? So it depends on the cut that you're looking at. So every cut has a different fat to protein ratio. Um, so it's kind of just getting in tune with what, what cuts you're selecting. So for example, yeah. like pork ribs are like around 70%. Um, and then like a chicken breast is very, very lean. So for something like that, you would add additional fat like butter and oils. Um, but uh, for certain cuts, if it's kind of hitting your, uh, around the range that you're going for, then you can just eat the meat with the associated fat. Um, so it's, it's about kind of understanding your numbers and yeah. kind of understanding where you can balance things out yeah. um, to meet your, yeah, to meet your needs. Yeah. And we prioritize like an animal-based foils like yeah. tallow, butter, yeah. ghee. Um, but we do include things like avocado mayo in your, in your plan, Anita. Yes. And it I, seems to I, be working out yep. with well for you. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, like one of the things that I really like is, is shrimp. I like those, uh, Argentine, uh, shrimp yeah. and there's like almost no fat. And so yeah. I mm -hmm. know that on a day when I have those shrimps, I've also either got to add some fat to that meal, or maybe my other meal of the day is going to be something like ribs or, or chuck yeah. or, or something like right. that. So, yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And as the more you kind of do it, the more intuitive it becomes, as long as you start to figure it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness. We are, we are still getting questions and we're getting closer, close to the top of the hour. Um, but let's just see what else we have here. Lorraine, I'm 71 and a ketovore newbie. Welcome to our world, Lorraine. I've had bilateral hip and shoulder arthroplasties plus other surgeries. What I am finding is faster healing. I'm eating between 10 and five on most days. Yeah, I, I, that's amazing, Lorraine. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and yeah, keep, keep it up. Okay. Uh, Christy from Meeting Wellness. When you eat those lean shrimp, what do you use to add the extra fat? Well, normally, uh, Christy, I've already eaten, like I'd like to have them for dinner on top of my steak. 
um, or beside my steak. So if the steak uh, doesn't have quite enough fat, um, most, you know, if it's ribeye or something, it almost does. But you, sometimes in the morning, I'll have had a more fatty meal because the you know and that offsets it because i'm i'm kind now now this is actually a, a brings up a question for me does it matter if you meet your mac like do you have to meet your macros meal by meal or is it okay the way i've been doing it which is i worry about what's the end of the day total do you know what i'm saying I would say it's even farther out than that. You could even go average for the week. Average for the week. Yeah. Really? Because it's okay. hard to get the exact. But the problem is people can't really follow a weekly macro amount. Imagine you're eating, you have to hit a thousand grams of protein, 1500 grams of fat in a week. Most people can't compute that in their head to, it's easier to plan out a day's worth of eating than yeah. it is to plan out a week's worth of eating. Okay. So that's probably days, the easiest for someone to follow on a regular okay. basis. I would say if someone's trying to change their fat to protein ratio to try it for at least seven days uh, and see kind of like if it, whether that works or not. You need you need at least a week to, yeah. to know whether like a ratio is working for you or not because, um, you know, just one or two days isn't going to be enough. So, yeah, you can see it as like an average over a week because yeah. um, sometimes it's hard, right, because foods just have certain numbers and um, we try to get as close as possible, but you don't need to obsess with right. numbers on getting your toys. Okay specific number okay. on a okay. day. Yeah. 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 Cause I kind of, I do rely on sort of the daily total and, and, and my, yeah. you know, because often my first meal is bigger than my second meal. I use that second meal to sort of adjust things in the first yeah. meal. Now, Kevin, if I followed your food plan mm -hmm. that you give me, I probably wouldn't have to worry about it at all, <laughs> but sometimes I just have different things in my fridge because yeah. of, different reasons yeah, for um, sure. well, but, I, but I, recipe I, testing right yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> well that's the other thing as a youtuber yeah. you know yeah. i'm working on an oktoberfest recipe that uh you know is just yeah i have to kind of plan around those sorts of things right but um you know i just i do find uh the meal plans that you give me are extremely helpful to figure out combinations of foods that i can have that are just going to hit that that macro i need so hmm. I, I appreciate those very much, even if I don't always follow them right away. Yeah. Uh, so Sarah, Anita, I love that you never give up and you're always open to learning and trying new strategies. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I, ha I am a tweaker and uh, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I had this chance to, to try it somebody else's way, you know, because we sometimes we don't see we don't see the, the things that are going on, but it takes another set of eyes to come in and go, you know, maybe, maybe this might work for you. And that's exactly what has happened here um, with Alice and Kevin. Uh, so I'm very grateful. Um, do Alice and Kevin, Carmen, do Alice and Kevin have a YouTube channel? They sure do. do. And uh, that link is, uh, it is in here somewhere. I know the moderators have posted it a couple of times. There it is. It's on the banner at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, uh, Bonnie and or Melissa. So yes, they do. And uh, I would love everybody here to go and follow them there and uh, say hi to them there. They have uh, amazing simple recipes that are that are carnivore and sometimes keto like you know alice yeah. you lean a little more keto yep um so yeah they have a little bit of that too uh so let me see here okay so we are wow we perfect uh, almost perfect timing i that was the last question i think unless i i hope i haven't missed any i'm pretty sure i got them all that went fast it had did to. go fast. That I mean, these hours just whip by sometimes. I'm just checking the other chat. Um, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I should have checked the other chat when Melissa gave me the five minute warning. <laughs> uh, this is this is my one minute warning. Um, so I, you know, again from the bottom of my heart, I thank you guys for walking me through and being patient and helping me figure out. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a roadmap now to to finish the job. You know, to it's been. <sighs> For those of you who don't know, if any of you have joined here, you know, maybe this is the first time you, you've seen this, uh, my channel or a live stream or, or Alice and Kevin or anything. 
I mean, I've been keto and carnivore for a long time, uh, carnivore now, and I have lost about 145 pounds and, you know, just struggling to get to the end of the journey. Of course, the journey never ends, but struggling to get to that weight goal and then begins the journey of maintaining it, which mm -hmm. would be my lifetime journey. And, you know, it. so this is what led me to Alice and, and Kevin and, and their coaching and, uh, uh, I've joined their academy, which, you know, you guys will have a chance to join too at the end of the month when they put that out there again. Just because we, no matter how many years we've been doing this, we all, we all need a tribe. We all need mentors. I, I've had people, and I'm in group coaching as well at the same time with Kelly Hogan. So, I mean, people sometimes say to me, well, what do you, you don't need coaching. You've been doing this for so long. You could be coaching somebody. I need coaching. I, I need coaching from other people. I need other perspectives. Um, I think we all do. And we all need friends and comrades and tribes that are doing the same thing as us. And, and I think it's so important. I'm, I'm thrilled that you guys started that academy with the, um, school or whatever what is that it's like a social community a, a, another mm. social community but not facebook so <laughs> yeah. um yeah i'm thrilled about it and i'm you know going to be hap happily in there participating with other like-minded people and and so thank you very much for for that and uh anyone that i can encourage along the way um you know it, it's it's kind of you know what I do. So, do you guys have any have any last minute things you want to say before we say good night to everybody? I was just going to say that one on one coaching definitely goes two ways. It's a two way street as well. So, obviously, kudos to you for all your hard work and dedication and, and sticking with, hmm. um, you know, the things that we guided you on. And um, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're a great coachee. Yeah, so. <laughs> great student. Great student. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you've seen great results, and uh, yeah, we're happy. Yes. kind of continue on for the next four weeks or so here and um i'm thrilled about see what else we can do and it seems like your knee's healing a little better now so maybe we yes, can get into some is. more different strategies because that was one of the main things i wanted to work with you with is the some of the activity sort of stuff on that side and um yeah. that's something we work with other, other clients as well yeah but um obviously you have the injury so we will kind of get into that more i think over the next four weeks and kind of hone, it, hone in on that and then um yeah if anyone's interested in doing one-on-one -on -one coaching I think the links are below and we are offering the hundred dollar discount to everyone who's on the live stream. Yes. So yeah, yeah. feel free to book a call and we'd love to talk to you. Thank you very much. All those links will be below. Um, I'm sorry if we did miss any questions uh, and uh, you know, but we have to leave it at the hour and uh, thanks again for coming. You guys, uh, you know, we'll have to do it again sometime, you know, sure. come, come on a live at some point again. It's, it's yeah. always fun to talk to you. Everybody else, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show today or the, uh, you know, the Q&A in the chat and hope you learned something. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. We'll be talking about uh, poop, actually. <laughs> We're going to talk about things like that. Um, and uh, have the rest, uh, have a great rest of your Sunday night. So, yeah, bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank bye, you. Everyone. Thank you.